Hello, this is Carl Irwin uh, with a, a tutorial for a new lens flare package that I've uh, uploaded to BlendSwap. I'm go I'd like to uh, share with you. I'll give you the link for that in a moment uh, so you can go find it. Um, uh, I spent an evening after the last tutorial that I made concerning uh, the creation of lens flare elements using uh, the Blender game engine settings and then rendering them via GLSL uh, in real time. And after I created this tutorial, I spent an evening to put together a uh, package of uh, presets uh, and lens flare presets in one blend file packaged together uh, just for you to play around with and to uh, get started with and using this uh, technique. So I'll show you uh, what uh, we're going to do uh, with it. This is just an example. It's a video file of a cityscape and the camera kind of pans around and you can see this is a little overdone. There's three flares here. There's one here, one there, and one there. And you can see how they interact and you can see the elements moving through. Lots of uh, flare action going on, a little bit overdone, a little bit of lens grit that you can see on there. Uh, so I'll show you how this is uh, created and uh, how we can use this uh, package. Uh, so let's open up the file very quickly. A uh, quick comment that this is uh, Ubuntu Studio 14.04, kind of looks like Chrome S, but I just have the Chromium apps uh, applications uh, loaded onto this uh, computer. It's just a dual core processor, 64 megabytes of RAM, pretty low end, uh, off the Walmart shelf kind of uh, computer um, using a Linux uh, distribution. So uh, if we uh, open up the file, uh, you uh, will go to BlendSwap and you can uh, search for GL flares and you should find uh, this uh, file. Or uh, if you would like an easier way to get there, this is the uh, link, a shortened link to get there, bit.ly slash 1myvonu. Go ahead and jot that down, uh, visit uh, and uh, uh, throw that into your browser. It'll take you to the page on BlendSwap to download the file. When you first open up the uh, file, you will see this, this page, uh, the scene, which just has some instructions and text uh, written out here just to help you out. I uh, got my name. Uh, you don't need to reference me when you use this. Uh, just use it. Have fun. Mess around with it. Have at it. I really don't care about the credit, to be honest with you. Um, just like to uh, share what I discover whenever I use the program. Um, and it just explains uh, what uh, what you can do with it. There's 12 preset scenes. Each scene represents a lens flare that should render in real time via GLSL shading mode. This flare uh, can be rendered using the OpenGL render buttons, which are these buttons down here. Uh, or it can be added to a track in the video sequence editor as a scene. Uh, there, it can be uh, composited using the add blending mode. You can also use some other blending modes as well, but add is typically what you might use for a uh, lens flare. And uh, OpenGL render buttons. You have to render this in the VSE, in the video sequence editor, using the OpenGL buttons. Uh, you cannot use the Blender internal uh, render engine. It won't work. Uh, these flares will not render properly or quickly via the er internal render engine or cycles. Uh, move and scale the flare by adjusting the control uh, object in the scene. All elements may be uh, disabled or adjusted however constraints are applied to keep the scene in place and selection is restricted by default so you really can't mess up the file everything's been restricted and locked out so you'd have to turn on all of the uh, locks uh, in order to uh, move things where they really shouldn't be so it really should be restricted to the uh, kind of movement uh, that the flare is only supposed to take um, I advise that you make a full copy of this uh, file each time a new copy uh, every time that you use it um, um, that's not what this is saying here, but don't forget to co uh, save a backup copy. That's what I was looking for. Uh, because it, you don't want to mess up this um, blend file and lose it just in case it uh, disappears from blend swap at some point in the future. Uh, anyway, just to show you what we have, if you look here under the scenes, we have 12 presets. Ignore this one, site. That is the uh, uh, shortened link that I showed you. We have uh, 12 presets, uh, Bubba, Classic, Dark Side, Final Frontier, Geist, St. Elmo, Sasquatch, Sterling, uh, Thin Man, Twilight, White Lightning, and Zone. I tried to just come up with some uh, clever uh, names. Uh, you may think they're clever, maybe not. Uh, doesn't really matter. Let's take a look here. We're going to open up the uh, first one. Let's open up Classic so you can see kind of what a basic uh, Classic Lens Flare, at least in my opinion, looks like. It'll take a few seconds for this to load because it is loading a lot into the GLSL uh, uh, render uh, engine, but once it opens, once it opens, you'll see that uh, it moves very quickly in real time. Okay, so you can grab this uh, lens flare control, and this is the control right here, and it operates all of these other elements. You can go to the uh, uh, properties of these elements and change the brightness or the color. Uh, you can mess around with that. Check out the uh, tutorial uh, that I had before. 
demonstrating this technique to see how that might be done. Uh, but just for example, let's say I uh, went to uh, one of these octagons and I opened up the uh, material. I could change the uh, color of it here. It's kind of on a greenish tone uh, to maybe an orange kind of tone. And uh, you can see that it updated in the scene there. So let me undo that real quick. And uh, as we wait for that to happen, and any time, try that again. Oh, there we go. Okay. So like I said, it's in GLSL mode and there's a lot of elements there. So it does take a little while for things to load, but once you have everything uh, turned on, uh, it moves very, very quickly and will render very quickly. Okay. So this is uh, one scene, another one, uh, Bubba. Let's see what this looks like. And again, a few seconds, we'll let it load up. I tried to make some very different and diverse examples. So this one's called Bubba. Looks a little bit different, kind of a thicker uh, kind of flare. Another one here, uh, Dark Side. And we'll give it a few seconds. This one's a kind of a red flare. And these are not necessarily true and authentic. Uh, they just are supposed to have sort of an element of verisimilitude means that they look like they're realistic, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing with lens flares. I just kind of threw things in there that would make sense to me. So uh, that's the dark side. Uh, Final Frontier. We'll let this one load up, and this one's going to be more of a blue color. Very similar, actually, to the last one. Some different elements in there. Uh, a little bit smaller light source. Uh, the next one, Geist. Some of these have very, very heavy... Um, Lens grit, like this one here, so it just has one very basic caustic image out here, kind of a big, broad, uh, glowing uh, light form. You can see that these rays actually move and rotate as the uh, lens flare moves around to give it a little bit more added realism. Uh, and uh, St. Elmo. This one has uh, that hoop figure that I talked about in my last tutorial. Uh, kind of an interesting one. You can see that these um, uh, light rays, they actually track towards the center of the uh, screen, the way it's set up. Okay, and next one, Sasquatch, which is another name for Bigfoot. And we'll let this load up, and you can see there's another thick kind of flare with these circular uh, elements. And uh, a little sterling. This is kind of an interesting one, more of a purpley kind of color. And uh, it has these really interesting uh, bokeh, or not bokeh, but uh, caustic images in there. Uh, you can see this one moves around lots of shimmery kinds of lights on it. And uh, this is actually one image, one image plane on there. And as it goes towards the center of the screen, those caustic images disappear. They actually rotate and follow the direction uh, away from the flare. And let's see what else we have. Uh, Thin Man. This is going to be a really kind of skinny, classic looking flare. So really, really thin, anamorphic kind of flare. And uh, you can see these uh, circles are kind of flattened out to give it more of an anamorphic look. And the lens flare rays are... Uh, flattened out as well. Very simple kind of flare. I think you'll find that as you use these you'll tend to use the more simple ones than the complex ones. They tend to composite a little bit better. Uh, twilight. Uh, we'll click on the control so we can move it. And there's Twilight. This one's a really simple one. All of these images in here were actually composited together as one plane, so there's really only two elements in here, three elements, including the lens grit. So there's the flare itself, there's the caustic image, and then the lens grit. So this one has very few elements in it. Uh, white lightning. And again, it loads up a little slow, but once you're there, so it's got another kind of hoop on there. Some interesting uh, things. A little bit of lens grit. A few dots poke up there. And the last one, zone. This is kind of a really big overbearing one. This is a flare that you probably want to use uh, solo as one flare in a scene. You wouldn't want to use more than one of these just because it's so large with lots of uh, 
little pieces on it. Okay, so these are the flares, and uh, you can use these uh, to uh, composite onto uh, other footage in the video sequence editor. You can actually apply uh, empties from tracked footage uh, to uh, move these around, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So let me uh, open up very quickly a uh, example. Yeah, that's the wrong one. One second. Uh, there we go. So as we wait for this to load, this is another version of the same file, and I would recommend that you do that, that you save, as soon as you open up, save your file as another name uh, so that you don't lose all of your data, original data and presets. Um, what I did is I went to the uh, video, seek, or the uh, rather the clip editor, and I loaded in this video, and I tracked three points. So this is a video of uh, 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 kind of a cityscape, and as I, uh, actually, yeah, there we go, as we play it through, let me let me turn the playback on here. Clip editor playback. As I play it through, you can see that I've tracked these um, three points. And then what I did is I used the reconstruction uh, uh, link empty to track. And what it does is it puts three empties into the scene that I. Uh, used for the uh, clip editor, which is the classic lens flare scene. So now if I go back to the uh, 3D view, we can see the scene in here, and if I turn off the render, we'll see that there's actually three empties in here that are moving around. And I parented my control to the first empty. So now as I play this back, uh, that empty, which has been tracked to that point in space on the video, will track around uh, my lens flare point. Okay. Then what I did is I duplicated this scene and I made a second one, classic one. And uh, when you duplicate a full copy of a scene, it will copy these um, points as well, uh, and it will make new copies of them. So as you uh, apply the uh, constraints to that, or the parenting, uh, for example, I added this constraint here, uh, copy location to track 04, which is the uh, tracking data. That's the tracking uh, input. And now it will track to that point. So when I play this back, uh, you'll see what we get. Okay. And then what I did is I uh, went to another scene and I copied these tracks. And uh, if you open up uh, all scenes here, you can see every scene. I can copy these tracks to another scene, and I copied them to uh, dark side. So here are the uh, tracks in here. At least I only, I only copied the one track that I needed, which is the final one, track two. So now when I go to that scene, uh, dark side, I'll see uh, the final track parented uh, with the uh, lens flare control parented to it, and here it is. So as I play this one back, now I have uh, this lens flare working in this scene. Okay, so that's how I get my lens flares to po follow my uh, uh, tracking points. So now if I go to the video sequence editor, I'll show you very quickly what's going on here. I loaded in my original uh, video, and if I play this back, you can see it plays in essentially real time, a little bit slow. The first thing I want to do is I want to uh, decrease the... Um, uh, color. It's a little bit bright, and lens flare uh, uh, lens flares do not composite well onto bright scenes. You really need to put them on darker scenes. You won't see many of the elements if you do. Uh, if you're going to use a lens flare for a brighter scene, you might as well use a very, very simple one uh, so that you can see it better. But just to show you here, I'll turn on my first scene. I brought in my classic scene. You go to Add Scene, and then you choose your scene. I added that one. I added Classic 1, and I added Dark Side, and they're off right now. So this is set to, uh, let me actually put it on Cross first so you can see what it looks like. When I turn it on, uh, here's my scene. I'll try that again. There we go. Oops, turned off. All right. So I turned it on, and now here's my scene. And if I uh, play this back, you'll see that my lens flare is moving around just as it was before. Okay. So this is not, this is not pre-rendered. This is just coming directly from the scene, and it's uh, in OpenGL preview with the texture setting on. So now if I set this to add, you can see how it blows out. See how it's really, really bright. So what I want to do is I want to go to my test video, and I'm going to turn on um, a curve adjustment. So I'm going to darken it up, and I added this curve adjustment to darken up my video. Now we can see a lot more detail on my lens flare. Okay. Another trick is to add a vignette. So this is a um, uh, 
an overlay image that I set on here, set the opacity down to 0 0.08, and actually if I turn this off, we can see, let me turn off my lens flare, you can see what, a vi what this vignette looks like. It's just an alpha transparent enabled uh, overlay, and this is on a white color, so you can see it. Turn my video back on. Turn my lens flare back on. Let me turn on the other lens flares and we'll set it to uh, add as well. So we'll turn on classic one. Give it just a few seconds to load. I'm running a lot of other processes on here for the recording. So set this to add. And I'll turn on the dark side. Set it to add. And now you can see how blown out everything is. So we want to make some adjustments. Um, it is easier to use the add mode but you can actually use the overdrop or the alpha over as well what you do is you make a copy of the scene and then you can add a mask to that scene and use the copy as the reference and it will take the luminance to create an alpha uh, transparency ability and that actually renders out really really clearly the problem is, is it only works with one flare so if you have multiple flares in there because it's uh, rendering an alpha gradient you'll find that there's actually some dark darkness in the gradient that will start to uh, uh, inhibit all the other flares so the best thing to do probably is to just add a curves adjustment so we're going to decrease the contrast I'm going to take down the lights and bring up the darks a little bit so we can see those uh, different elements so I'll apply my curve to each one of these again similar kind of curve and here I have them composited together and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little bit. So I'll set this one to uh, 0.8. Set the next one to 0.5 because it's right next to it. And it'll kind of borrow some of the uh, luminance from the other one. And I'll set the last one to 0 0.8. And now I can render out. And the buttons you want to use to do this are the OpenGL buttons over here. You can set all of your output information. Uh, but do not use the internal render buttons. It won't work. So if I uh, render one frame, I click on here and it'll take a couple seconds. Again, I'm running a lot of processes. It should only take a couple of seconds there. And you can see it'll start to render out frames as a video. So this one here is for the uh, picture, and this is for video. And uh, there you have it. It'll render out your video in just a matter of a few minutes, and uh, you'll be good to go. So uh, this is uh, my contribution. I hope you uh, enjoy it. I hope you have fun with it. Uh, good luck using this, and I wish all of you uh, happy blending.